Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. I'm joined by Legislator Christopher Johnson, who's the Majority Whip of the Board of Legislators, and we have a number of individuals from the community to launch uh, legislation that will be reviewed by the Board of Legislators to strengthen the Human Rights Re uh, Commission um, legislation in order to strengthen our ability to protect people from acts of hatred and uh, potential violence here in Westchester County. We as a government are committed to making sure that every Westchester resident, whatever their ethnic background is, whatever their age may be, whatever their uh, social standing may be, is treated fairly and properly by all individuals in this county. We have a wonderful mosaic in Westchester County, and the contributions of people of all different demographic backgrounds contribute to what makes Westchester successful. But we have to make sure that everybody understands that they are safe and protected in this county and this is one step in that direction and uh, we're going to have some of our speakers talk a little bit about their perspective on the issue and and on the legislation and of course with legislator Johnson here on behalf of the Board of Legislators uh, the work that they will be doing to uh, make the public debate and assessment about this when I took office in 2018 I made it a priority to strengthen the Westchester Human Rights Commission and it wasn't just a general commitment that you make during a campaign I was there with the late Lois Bronze and uh, with the one wonderful Andre Stewart Cousins when the three of us were county legislators, leader of the legislature over 20 years ago as chairman, as vice chair, and as head of the legislation committee to create this Human Rights Commission. And what we envisioned as legislative intent has been implemented by uh, those who served on the commission in the last few years and now our executive director, Tejas Sanchala, who is here and we'll talk a little bit about this. And we are trying to strengthen that commitment in real world terms. So we turn to our law department, represented here by John Nona, who's our county attorney, and Jason Whitehead, who's a senior assistant county attorney, to help us craft that which would strengthen the law and allow tools that uh, can be used to make sure that we send the right message and a strong message all across Westchester County that hatred has no home here. And, and we stand by our, our uh, neighbors of every ethnic background. We have seen in recent months uh, prejudice against the Asian American community, anti-Semitic acts against the Jewish community, racist acts against the African American community, uh, against the Hispanic community, and against all other different types of groups, the LGBT community. And in every one of these situations, the root cause is a hatred that treats people based on the color of their skin or by some external, rather than, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, by the content of their character. If each of us can be dealt with and, and uh, treated based on the content of our character, then we're going to be the most successful, the best possible Westchester that we can be. This legislation is being introduced, delivered to the Board of Legislators, and they will go through a thorough review. I'll ask Chris Johnson to cover some of that in his comments. Under current Westchester County human rights law, it is unlawful to discriminate in relation to employment, public accommodations, housing accommodations, commercial space and land transactions, and the issuance of credit. But what we have failed to correct in the original legislation is protection against discriminatory harassment that fall outside of those specific activities. This proposed change will make it an unlawful discriminatory practice for a person to, by, and I quote, force or threat of force, knowingly injure intimidate or interfere with or threaten any other person in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to such other person by the Constitution or the laws of the United States, the constitutional laws of this state, or by local law or by this chapter. Now, there are some practical examples uh, of what that represents, and I'm going to ask Tejas and Chala to cover what some of those things represent. The amendment will enable the Human Rights Commission to award compensatory damages, punitive damages, reasonable attorney's fees, and seek equitable relief where appropriate. The amendment will work as well to increase the reporting of hate incidents, which will assist law enforcement in developing mitigation strategies to address violations of the human rights law, as well as inform the work of the commission. The proposed amendment will not infringe upon First Amendment rights of any person, as this legislation is meant to address discriminatory harassment only. And that is a very important distinction to make. There, are, there is uh, rhetoric out there that talks about uh, what exactly we're trying to do uh, anywhere in the society to deal with acts of hatred. We want to be very specific that the First Amendment right to free speech is inviolate, but at the same time, that speech, when it, when it moves into other areas of activity, 
and become prejudicial in its, in its implication, that we then have a right and a responsibility as a society to address that act and to call it for what it is, and where appropriate, to prosecute that. So the first speaker that we're going to ask to, uh, to talk to us is the person who is the executive director of our Human Rights Commission. He's done a fabulous job uh, in, in the spirit of, of Dolores Braithwaite and Allison Green and, and former leaders of this body. He brings legal acumen as well as a managerial experience to this task. He was one of the original people that helped write and set up the original Human Rights Commission. And now as its executive director, we're very happy to have with us Tejas and Chala to uh, outline a little bit about what the practical implications of this legislation is. Changes. Thank you, County Executive, for your leadership and your continued support. My name is Tejas Sinchala, and my pronouns are he, him, his. The proposed amendment would expand the scope of the Westchester County Human Rights Law to provide an avenue of justice for victims of discriminatory harassment. It is a timely and proactive approach to the surge in reported hate incidents nationwide. In general, it seeks to protect Westchester from the neighbor who intimidates them because they're gay, the person who attacks them on the street because they're an immigrant, from the bus passenger that targets them because they wear a hijab or a yarmulke. As the county executive says, the discriminatory harassment conduct has to be more than words. It's words plus conduct. The commission strives for a beloved community where no one experiences a fear of being attacked or faces discrimination because of how they look, what they believe, where they were born, or who they love. We look forward to discussing the proposed amendment with the Board of Legislators. Thanks very much. We have a number of individuals who have um, been very gracious in serving in a variety of capacities, some of which uh, serve on boards and commissions by Westchester County government in areas of different uh, demographic uh, involvement. Some of them are active in uh, non-governmental organizations that uh, provide services and assistance to people in those different communities. And we want to hear from a lot of those different voices because those are the voices they represent of the people who have suffered this type of treatment at the hands of other individuals. So I'm going to begin first with David Imamura, who uh, serves as a co-chair of the county's Asian American Advisory Board. David. Thank you, County Executive Latimer. Um, I think I speak for many Asian Americans when I say that in the past year and a half, we feel we've been advised twice. On one hand, we're victims of the virus. We're concerned about our friends or our family getting sick. But on the other hand, we have now been afraid of our fellow Americans. And I'm thrilled that Westchester County is coming together and considering this discriminatory harassment bill to make sure we send a message that hate has no place in Westchester County. I want to applaud the Human Rights Commission, as well as the county legislature and the ninth floor for coming together and putting this legislation together. And I look forward to an active dialogue in ensuring that we make sure that this, our county is progressive in this area. Thank you. Next, we have William Schrag, who is serving uh, as president of the Westchester Jewish Council. Bill. Thank you, George. The Westchester Jewish Council represents over 130 organizations with thousands of individual members in the eighth largest Jewish community in the United States. On behalf of the council, I want to express our support and gratitude for the county executive's proposal of a new local law amending the human rights law to address discriminatory harassment in Westchester County. I also want to thank the Deputy Commissioner Ken Jenkins for his unwavering support and together their conceptualization and promotion of this new legislation. I've been a resident of, West, uh, of New Rochelle and Westchester County for 33 years, and I've always been proud of the diverse and tolerant society in which I live. My next door neighbor, who isn't Jewish, has had a sign on her front lawn for several years now saying, hate has no home in Westchester. I've always felt very good about seeing that sign. And then last month, I thought, until last month, I thought it was referring to hate directed against other ethnic groups. Sadly, anti-Semitism has recently reared its ugly head again, and while some of the despicable images were from outside of Westchester, it's just too close to home to give us comfort. We need to speak up against all forms of hate, 
including anti-Semitism, the oldest form of group hatred, to make sure that hatred and discriminatory harassment doesn't gain a foothold in our own backyard. It's gratifying to know that our local laws are now being proposed to be amended to show just how seriously discriminatory harassment is taken in Westchester and that hate in any form and against any group will not be tolerated here. History has shown us that unchecked hatred can lead to the unimaginable and that things can change on a dime. If the world has learned anything over the past 75 years, it's that once hate is allowed to gain hold against one group, it can and will metastasize against others. We cannot and dare not remain silent. We must be vigilant, speak up, and call out hate in all of its manifestations. This new law, or well, this proposed new law, is intended to do just that. And for that reason, I reiterate the Westchester Jewish Council's support and gratitude for this proposed legislation. Thank you, Bill. Our next speaker is Hanaid Sarar. Uh, active in the Arab American community. We have an Arab American advisory board active in the Muslim community. Anate. Hello, everyone. I just want everyone to look and just see the people who are standing here today. Uh, Westchester is such a diverse uh, county, and I'm very proud to be part of uh, this county and part of uh, this board and, and this group. Um, in our Holy Quran, it says, which means we have created you from different backgrounds and ethnic groups to live together in harmony and in peace. So I just want to say that I am so happy that this is happening right now. Thank you, County Executive. Thank you, thank you uh, Christopher, and all of um, the human rights for having this um, legislative uh, you know, effort. And, and, and um, let's live together in peace. Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite James Young, who is a member of the LGBTQ Advisory Board. Hello, everyone. I want to say thank you to the County Executive, uh, George Latimer, to the Board of Legislators for considering this, and to the Human Rights Commission for proposing, along with the Asian American Advisory Board and the Westchester Jewish Council, as well as other volunteers of boards and commissions. My name is James Young, and I go by he, they pronouns. And I have the pleasure of serving on the Westchester County LGBTQ Advisory Board. I'm a queer Asian American. And for some of us, our identities, our most authentic selves, give people and organizations reason to attack us. It's actually quite timely that this legislation should be put forth during Pride Month, in fact, in the middle of Pride Month, as this is the month where we celebrate our diversity. We remember those who paved the way for us, and we continue to strive for equality. This legislation prohibits acts of discrimination and harassment against people, of protected, people in a protected class, which is important to all communities that strive for equality, including those who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, gender nonconforming, non-binary, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, plus, that's LGBTQIA plus communities. By enhancing the human rights law with respect to discriminatory harassment, Westchester is making sure that not only LGBTQIA plus folks are further protected under the law, but other groups that are susceptible to discrimination are protected as well. And let's face it, LGBTQIA plus folks are part of those communities as well. We are in those communities. We are young, we are older. We are in communities of color. We are women. We have different abilities. We belong to different religions and different classes. So at the intersectionality of being a queer Chinese American, I so appreciate the efforts of the county executive, George Latimer, his team, the Board of Legislators, the Human Rights Commission, and all of the members of the various advisory boards for making today a day where I and many others like me feel a little safer and protected. You know, a couple of weeks ago, George Latimer was at Playland raising the pride flag, and he said that the first two letters in Westchester is W-E for we. And today proves that we are, today proves that all of us are part of that we. Thank you. 
Thank you, James. Next, I ask uh, Maria Trusa to share her thoughts, a member of the Hispanic Advisory Board. As a born, a woman born and raised in the Dominican Republic, and I came here looking for the dream that we all look for. The dream sometimes, unfortunately, too many times, gets destroyed by hate. And we are here representing humanity. We're not just Latinos, we're not just Chinese queers, we're not just lesbian, we're not just black African American. We are human. And I think humanity has gotten it wrong. The status of who you are, uh, what, what job you have, what title you have, sort of have become your identity. But we are all humans first. I am so proud to be here today to represent the Hispanic community. Thank you, George Latimer. Thank you, all of you, the committee, for bringing hate to a destructive state. We are human. Let's not forget that. Thank you, Maria. Thank you to all of our speakers who have highlighted some of that experience that's out there. <clears throat> Before I bring Chris Johnson up to talk about his experiences and also from the legislative standpoint, let me also share that there are two other people who are here as I see it in, in spirit as I read this legislation. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Donato Minero and a gentleman by the name of John James Latimer. Donato Minero, through my mother's side of the family, was an Italian immigrant who came from uh, the town uh, Benvento in, uh, in Italy to uh, ultimately Harrison to work as a stonemason. John James Latimer came from County Fermanagh in North Ireland to, uh, to America for a better life so that his son and now his grandson would have an opportunity for an equal uh, consideration. This legislation affects every time that any of us as Americans look at another American as an other. And it is true that Donato Minero, as an Italian, was viewed as an other when he reached here, did not have fluency in the English language when he arrived here, no different than today's immigrants arriving from whatever part of the globe they come from. And although uh, uh, John James Latimer had the, uh, had the language in his back pocket, he too was viewed in a negative light by those who were already here. There was prejudice directed against the Irish and the Italians and every other ethnicity. Uh, this is part of the American experience. We have to admit it and we have to move beyond it. We have to get better than that. But I do believe that the grandson and the great-grandson of those two immigrants would be proud to know that we're standing up for every person in this country, that, there, that we treat that there is no other, it is a we, it is all of us together. Chris Johnson is a Westchester County legislator who has served us uh, representing uh, an important portion of Yonkers. He previously served on the Yonkers City Council. He has been made by his colleagues the majority whip, and he actually has a real whip in his office. <clears throat> So he is a legislative leader in the Board of Legislators, along with our Chairman Ben Boykin, Vice Chair Alfreda Williams, Majority Leader Mary Jane Shemsky, and Minority Leader Margaret Kunzio, uh, both for his own experiences, the district he represents, and because of his legislative authority, I'd like Chris to share his thoughts. Chris. Thank you, uh, County Executive. Uh, this is a piece of legislation where I do not think I'll have to pull my whip off the wall. Uh, so first I want to give, uh, I want to thank the County Executive. Uh, there is one thing, if there's nothing else, that he believes in, and it's that everyone should have a seat at the table. And I know that to be the case because I was the chair of the Appointments Committee, and he put me to work, making sure that all of you uh, were part of the committees that you're on and more. And so that is part of bringing the we together that he has done. And so I, I want to thank him for that. Uh, also, as, as he mentioned in the history of the Human Rights Commission, um, one of my predecessors in the seat that I sit in, Andrea Stewart Cousins, I'm glad that I have the opportunity here to strengthen what she was such a part of making sure became county law. Uh, and so as we move forward with this piece of legislation, um, I'm excited that uh, it has been introduced and it will be in uh, the committee that I chair, Social Services Committee, and we will have robust conversation about what this will look like and how this will benefit the residents of Westchester. The reality is that in this month of pride, that uh, in this week that will culminate with Juneteenth, um, in a time where we've seen, where we're uh, hopefully at the end of a pandemic where we've seen too many uh, Asian Americans um, fall victim to violence. 
uh, where we see uh, all over the globe that people are looked at because of who they are, they're looked at and treated differently. We want to make sure that that is not the case here in Westchester. And so we will have conversations uh, robust with all of you and more, uh, making sure that everyone is at the table, that people are heard, and that we can make sure that Westchester is a place that everyone feels safe, that everyone feels respected, everyone knows is their home, with the exception of hate, because hate has no home here in Westchester. Thank you. Well said, Chris. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to point out for the obvious for those who follow government. The legislative process is such that the Board of Legislators may make modifications to the law. They may make improvements or strengthen it in certain ways. As an administration, uh, we look forward to working with the Board on those things. We know that at the end of the day, uh, if, it, if they see fit to uh, pass the, the bill in whatever version that might be, final version, we would intend to sign it into law, and then we'll turn to the implementation of it in a number of different ways. Um, we, we brought together these wide group of people, representative of the people that they represent, but representative of all of us in Westchester. And I will just give closing thoughts very briefly. A couple of weekends ago, uh, I had the good fortune to be in the city of New Rochelle on, on Memorial Day weekend, where every Sunday morning in Memorial Day weekend, uh, the United Veterans of New Rochelle get together to uh, place flags on the grave sites of those individuals who've served their country, uh, those that served, whether they made the ultimate sacrifice or just served in the military. And you go through the, the graves, Beechwood and Holy Sepulchre, and place flags down wherever the, the gravestone marks that a veteran served. It's a moving moment. Uh, as you go through the, the, the graveyard. And after there's a general sort of uh, um, uh, patriotic service with music and taps and so forth, you go out by yourself with the flags into parts of the, uh, into parts of the cemetery and, and you place flags on those graves. It's not an unusual thing. It probably happens in every cemetery in Westchester County, if not across the nation. But as I was out there doing that in, the, in, in that morning, just a few weeks ago, I stopped at one point and I looked at all the different gravestones. And you see different types of gravestones, some obelisks, uh, some mausoleums, mostly individual um, gravestones of a certain height. And, and I thought to myself, this is how God sees us all. When you look at the gravestones, you can't tell who's buried under that plot. You can't tell if it was a man or a woman. You can't tell if it was a person who was transgendered. You can't tell if they were fat, skinny, tall, or short. You don't know what their religion is necessarily just by looking at the gravestone. You realize that what you see is the essential of what each of us are. We are living beings who are here in this planet for a certain fixed period of time. And while we are here for that period of time, we grow, we learn, we live, we love, we make some contribution by whatever we choose to do for our profession, and then we reach the ultimate point where the ultimate creator of us all calls us home. And, and you don't look at those gravestones and, and have opinions that some gravestones should be here and some gravestones should be there. They're all individual lives. And that is simply what we want to do. We want to try to see the world the way we think God sees us. The Almighty sees us as individual souls, and he, and he created us in our diversity. He, he determined, or she, however you want to define the Almighty, made that decision that we look as diverse as we are. And that's, and that's a, a master creation vision. Our mission is to try to be as close to that as we can, to treat each other as brothers and sisters, not as the other versus me ourselves. This law is a step in the right direction. It is not the completion of everything that we could do legislatively or within the county government. And the county government is a small part of a state, which is a small part of a nation, which is only one part of a world. But let us do everything we can. When I sat with Lois Bronze and, and Andrea Stewart Cousins, it, it was Lois's Bronze's heart, having grown up as an African-American woman in New Orleans uh, in the Jim Crow era, that gave us the urgency to do something like this. Andrea Stewart Cousins, who was proven to be a brilliant legislator, had the sense of how to do that. And my job was, as the chairman of the board of those days, 20 years ago, and God knows how much lighter I was in those days, to craft something that could pass. And we passed it, and now we have something that we can improve upon. That is what today is about, doing the right thing so that all of us can be part of the one singular mosaic that makes Westchester what it is. 
Um, if there are any questions from the press, uh, you can certainly reach out to us through Catherine Chaffee, 995-2932. I encourage you to reach out to any of our speakers today. They'd be happy to talk to you about what they've done. Our legal department can certainly explain any of the nuances of the actual language of the legislation. And of course, Chris and his colleagues on the Board of Legislators will be happy to talk to you about their process, as well as the content of what they do. In the meantime, today, we make one step forward. I'm George Latimer, County Executive. Thank you for participating and watching, and uh, we will uh, see you again tomorrow where we have some other important announcements to make. Have a good day and be safe.